We'll see there where that takes us. I also really like this uh, passage from Ephesians, uh, that the eyes of our hearts are enlightened or open so that we know the hope to which we've been called. Uh, it's a powerful message from Christ the King sent me. So, I pray that that will all come together in 10 minutes and uh, be good. <laughs> all right, so let's take a moment to praise Him. So, some of you know that I was camping uh, this last week. I was down at Sea Rim State Park. That's where the Gulf meets the marsh. And it was a lovely place to camp, and I was kayaking. So I got back in the marsh. I was a couple miles into the marsh, looking for alligators, go figure. I uh, didn't see any. But I came across like an opening, a little lake, and I saw a flock of ducks over on the other side. And I thought, well, I'm going to try and get close to those ducks. So I started kayaking over. Ducks didn't move. I got closer. Ducks didn't move. I got real close. Ducks didn't move. But behind the bush, a guy jumped out with a shotgun. <laughs> Apparently decoys work on kayakers. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> this is kind of a parable about decoys, right? Jesus is hiding in the hungry, in the thirsty, hiding in the naked, in the stranger, hiding in the sick, in the prisoner. And the thing about the sheep is they don't recognize Jesus in the hungry, in the thirsty, in the stranger, in the prisoner, in the naked. Or the sick. They don't recognize Jesus, but they recognize need. They recognize need and they do something about it. Food for the hungry, drink for the thirsty, clothes for the naked, visit the prisoner, visit the sick, bring them encouragement. They recognize the need. And those on the left don't recognize Jesus either. Don't see Jesus hiding in the hungry and the thirsty and the naked and the sick and the prisoner. They also don't recognize the need. They don't recognize the need. They walk away from it. This is not a story, a parable about works righteousness. It's about your very being. Have the eyes of your hearts been enlightened so you know the hope to which you've been called so that you live out of that hope and you recognize the need and hunger and thirst? People who are locked away, you recognize the need in those who have no clothes and you do something about it. Not because you think you're doing it for Jesus, not because you're doing it for Jesus. You're doing it because they need something and you have it. It's your very being. That's why we give. Because we're compelled to do it. We can't help ourselves. Christ the King Sunday, years ago, was the first time we put the crown of thorns on the cross. It happened because, I don't know, it might have been my second or third year here. I used to write my sermons out. Uh, but I didn't like what I'd written. I got here real early in the morning, like 6 o'clock. I thought, well, I'm just going to try and think through what I might say. Um, we had 8.30 service. It was the early service. Some of you remember that. So now it's 8 o'clock. I still got nothing. <laughs> got nothing. So I go back in the little closet. Remember, we used to have a room back over there. I went back in that room, and someone had given us this crown of thorns. And so I saw it in the box. And I thought, oh. Maybe I'll use it as a prop. That'll give me at least something. So I opened up the box, and there was a little tag on the crown of thorns. It said, these are real thorns from a real thorn bush. It should be obvious to the purchaser that they are very sharp. <laughs> Therefore, the manufacturer shall not be liable for any injury. This is the only crown Jesus wore. The only crown the king of the universe wore. 
And you and I and every other human being manufacture it because of our weakness, our sin, because of all those things that we chase after, that promise us everything and deliver nothing. But we are not liable because the King of glory wore this crown willingly and mounted the throne that was the cross. And dying our death, he rose above the grave so that you and I might recognize in this crown our salvation. And when the eyes of our hearts are opened by this instrument of torment and torture, we realize what we have been given, a hope that goes beyond anything we could ever imagine. Every picture of the risen Jesus shows the marks of death. The holes in his hands and his feet, the marks in his brow, the beating on his back. And it's done for a reason, because those are marks of his victory over death itself. And he wears the marks of death to mock death throughout all eternity. You did your worst to me. But you couldn't keep me down. I rose again. So I might gather together a vast cloud of witnesses who will celebrate forever in that place of perfection. Oh, now you and I will not wear the marks of death that took us away from life in this world. Oh, no. Oh, no. We'll be robed in righteousness, shining like the sun with new bodies, resurrected bodies, perfect bodies that will never wear out. <laughs> That's what this did for us. The only crown that Jesus wore. So recognize the need in the other, the stranger, the hungry, the thirsty, the prisoner, the sick, the naked, and do something about it. To that God then, your glory, honor, and praise now and always. Amen.